Good morning, church. Good to be with you for another week. And if you're stopping by for the first time, we want to welcome you. And we made it uh, today for those that follow us online. We have been talking about for a few weeks now the, uh, the, the series that we're going to begin, which happens to be today. And we're going to start this adventure together. It's a journey, if you will, with the goal of growing in our understanding of the topic of holiness. I'm so excited to start the journey. Uh, and at the same time, I will confess, I'm just a little bit terrified uh, to start the journey. What do we know about holiness? What, what do we understand about holiness? Will, will we all still be together when we complete our journey through this study on holiness? Uh, probably more personally, the question I'd ask from experience, uh, will we still be friends when we complete our journey through this study on holiness? Um, I've been praying and thinking and researching for this journey for uh, quite some time now, and I've been desperately praying uh, for every single one of us uh, to God from what we talked last week, that God will in fact wake our ears up so that we can hear Him and only Him on this journey and what we need to know about holiness. I, I was thinking about a title, and I had this vision in my mind of the title for this whole series. Very important, I think, but uh, I had my thoughts on what it should look like, but I struggled. I have zero artistic uh, skills, and so I was in a conversation with one of the young gals from our uh, Tri Lakes Church family named Courtney, and uh, she actually has skills in computer graphics, and I just described it trying to pull it out of my mind and let her understand what I'm doing. It was a scary process, but oh, did, did she do the job. She sent me back a, a, a picture for what uh, she was thinking I was thinking, and it's, I said, it's perfect. I had another one of our uh, gals from the church here put it into a banner form. We have a banner, and here it goes. Uh, holy to holy, fixing our leaks. Uh, the elders here, after talking with them about my plan for just a simple series, they, uh, they believe it is uh, much more than simple. It's a very important topic, especially in the times we've been living in lately. And so even today, we are providing those for in-person, and we've sent some out to those from the Tri Lakes family, uh, what I call journey journals, uh, little notebooks that uh, people can use to, to keep notes and, and answer homework questions and uh, and other questions that they may want to ask and so if you're online and we would encourage you if you would like to to get a notepad or a notebook something to kind of keep track as we go along but but most importantly as we began as we talked last week uh, the most important thing that I pray for is that today you know, we get it from the, the book of Hebrews today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart don't ignore it and don't just put it away and, and not respond to it. Listen closely and open your heart. And so with that, I'm going to actually start this incredible journey with a prayer. So let's pray together. We pray, Heavenly Father, uh, I ask your blessing as we begin this journey. Father, I ask your blessing to help each of us to open our eyes so that we can see you, uh, to open our ears so that we can hear you, to open our minds so that we can understand you. And Father, most importantly of all, that we'll open our hearts and we will receive what you want to tell us and that we won't just ignore it or let it pass, but we'll take it in and we will respond. We will obey what you tell us. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we start today, if you have your journals or a notepad, to, to ask yourselves this question. Uh, write it down, question number one, if you're going to put a date on it or what have you, session number one, whatever it might be on holiness. But ask yourself this question, am I holy? Are you holy? And after you write the question about yourself, go ahead right now while you're thinking about it and jot down kind of what you think or you believe it means to answer that question, are you holy? What does it mean to be holy? And now this is where the, the challenge comes in such an adventure. Uh, what does it mean to be holy? 
because I would assure you that if you wrote that down, there were others around you, and what we'll do here when we meet in person uh, later is that we'll, we'll share, and I guarantee you there will be different definitions. Maybe you're answering that question as far as are you holy, and the way that I would have answered it many years ago, I would have said, yes, I'm holy, and they'd say, well, why? What does it mean? I said, well, because I don't drink or smoke or cuss or chew and I don't go with the girls that do and that's age old that's something that I remember as a kid and maybe you would answer that way for yourself how do you define holiness and some would say well it depends on how you define it and, and I, I love the sound of that if that's true then man I, I would change my answer I'd say well I believe in God if that's what it takes therefore that means I can drink and smoke and cuss and chew and go with the girls that do. Now that needs to stop right now uh, with my wife. We're not going to go any further, but uh, then I would be fine if I got to define holiness, wouldn't I? What about you? If we get to define what it is, there's no challenge. There's no struggle. There's no problem. But to some, it most definitely is something that is much more important than thinking that we can define it. In fact, it seems to be a more common statement that I hear more and more, especially lately of discussions, when I'm in discussions of Christians talking of things of the Bible or things of God or, or different areas of how we live and how Scripture applies to us, and I will inevitably hear that statement. Well, it depends on how you, how you define this particular word. If you're talking about love, that you must love, well, what does it mean to love? Well, it depends on how you define love. If it says, well, you must not hate anybody, well, how, what does that mean? Well, it depends on how you define hate. You, you must forgive. Well, what does that mean? Well, it depends on how you define forgive. Uh, you must be holy. How does it work if we do the defining? It brings us to the explanation of the words that I chose for, for this very theme, fixing our leaks. I've been around long enough to know there's, there's little hope if I would just stand and say, all right, we're going to start this series and it's just going to be, the title is Holiness. I know instantly the mere mention of the word holy will get some people really riled, including myself. This is where the leak part comes. This is the, the selfish side this is the sinful side the fleshly side of who we are are there people involved that there's going to be some problems if you hear the word holy to some it's it, i can imagine thinking oh great uh, here's another preacher standing up and going to tell me how terrible i am going to tell me how i need to work harder and change this or change that if i want to be holy at the same time, you might have another thought of someone else saying, oh great, a preacher going to tell me I don't have to worry about holiness because Jesus died to make me holy. I don't have to do a thing. There's nothing I can do to be holy. It's already done. Just live life and enjoy life. Go to church when you can. Praise God and Jesus that, that it makes you holy when you can. These are the leaks part. And that, by the way, I just let you know as we begin series number one, session number one, it, that's the, the portion that where I will be taking that perspective as I preach and teach throughout this series. Because when it comes to the holy part, I confess to you, I, I'm at an elementary level of being able to preach or teach. But when it comes to the leaks part, if there was such a degree, I would have my doctorate in the leaks part. The sinful side, the selfish side, the fleshly side. We need to start here on the journey if we want to understand holiness and asking the question, what is holiness? So you can answer the question for yourselves, am I holy? Most typically at this point would say, let's just go to the dictionary. Let's find out what the definition of holy is, and that's where, where we can find out if I'm holy. And this is where our journey might end before we even take off, because I stand today and say, no, no, we're not going to the dictionary. The dictionary is, is where we find man's definition of words. 
And, well, well, we'll go find the Hebrew meaning, the Greek meaning, all these. And, and not, I love those, by the way, those studies, but we're not going to go there for this. We're going to go to God's Word. Let's allow God to define holiness. There's a huge difference between God defining it and all the different definitions that we can come up with as humans. We've got to be very careful when studying things of God that, that we don't say things like, well, it depends on how we define this word or that word. It doesn't. When it comes to things of God, it never depends on how we decide to define it. God's the only one that can define it. Popular opinion is never going to define it. Majority vote will never define it. Personal agenda or personal preferences is never going to define the true meaning of the things of God because our ways, our leaks, if you remember, they will only corrupt and taint the true meaning. What is holiness? Well, we start at the, the beginning of God's story. Now don't just go to the end of God's story and rip out one scripture and say, here it is, all right, let's go. No, we start at the beginning where it first began. Way back in that section that someone labeled old, don't even get me started, it's all one story. Back in Genesis, and people say, we're going to talk about holiness from Genesis? That's where it began. If you get your Bibles in Genesis chapter 2, let's just read the example and read the truth as God is going to define it for us. Genesis chapter 2, where we've just finished the story in Genesis 1 of the creation. Six days God created the heavens and the earth. Chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Wow, here's our first introduction. And hopefully God's not just going to leave us hanging to where we got to decide how we're going to define the word. He's going to explain it, which he does. He tells us in verse 3, he blessed the seventh day and he made it holy. Some translations, God sanctified it. Is there, well, is there a difference between holy and, and sanctification? Well, yes and no. We're going to address that later on in the series. But for now, let's just focus on the holy part. Hold that thought. God made it the seventh day. He made it holy. We're going to have an upcoming session in this series, Lord willing, the history of holy. But here's the starting point. The first holy in Scripture, as I find it, he made the seventh day a holy day. Not a person, but a day. Well, how did he make the seventh day holy? And what does that mean, holy? Did God have to sacrifice an animal that he created in order to, to, to make something holy? What? No, God made the seventh day holy. What does it mean? Stay in the text, because there's a word there, a highlight, underline, and circle. Because... Here it comes. God is saying, I made the seventh day holy because, well, what made it holy? On the seventh day, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So, so that's how God made it holy. He didn't work on the seventh day. And he's saying, yeah, exactly. On day one, he worked. On two, day three, day four, five, six, work, 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 work. But on the seventh day, when that seventh day come, came, the, come, the word was, work was completed. So God rested. No more work. Day seven was different than all the other days. Day one through six, work. Day seven, rest. I love how simple it is. My knowledge level on holiness, elementary. But from Genesis chapter two, God tells us, he worked for six days on creating all things, and on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on the seventh day he rested. He didn't work. Time for a test. Now maybe you're saying, oh, here it comes. Just what I was thinking. Test. Now we're going to have to do test. Just be patient. Stay with me. Here's your test. 
I had my executive producer of video production slash the PowerPoint creator put this slide together uh, concerning trying to illustrate this definition of holy. On the, on the screen, if you look at the monitor, I had her take seven different numbers that represent seven different days and scramble them up and put them on the screen. But what I want you to do is I want you to look closely. Look closely at the screen, and I want you to concentrate. And I want to say, listen, one of these days is not like the others. Can you pick which day is not like the others? If you can, get your journal, write it down. What number is not like the others? Now, ready? If you wrote down in your book or have in your mind day number seven, you are absolutely Correct, 100% A+. Plus. And by the way, congratulations. You also have your definition from God as to what holy is. God made day number seven holy because on it he rested. Day one through six, he worked. Day seven, he rested. Day seven was different than all the other days. Day seven was distinct from all the other days. Day seven was set apart from all the other days. This is holy. And get this, God made day seven holy before there was a Bible, before there, was, there were any commandments that had to be obeyed and followed, before there was a temple or an altar for sacrifices, before there was Jesus on a cross. God made day seven holy. Next stop, God and man. Let's continue on our quick journey here. Exodus chapter 3, a, a man named Moses is out just tending sheep, minding his own business is how I describe it. And, and we read from verse 5 in Exodus chapter 3, uh, there's a burning bush. And God looks, and it's not burn, being burnt up. So he goes over, Moses goes over and says, what's going on here? And as Moses came near, God spoke to Moses from the bush. And he tells Moses, don't come any closer. In fact, take off your sandals, for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Wow. And did Moses, we don't have the, the response documented here if there was one, but wouldn't you think he would say, well, Hello? Who, who is this? What's going on? What does holy mean? Why do I have to take my sandals off? God says, listen, take off your sandals because where you're standing is holy ground. Holy. All we know is that Moses hid his face and was terrified to look at God. Well, what does holy ground mean? Well, let's apply our definition that we just started with from Genesis here. It's going to go all the way through the entire story. Let's apply it to this one. Test time. Here you go. I, I've got a, the, some pictures coming in of, of, of three pictures of ground. Uh, you've got one picture of ground, and then you can look at uh, picture number two of ground, and then we'll bring in picture number three of ground. And then I want you to look very closely and concentrate. Here's the test. One of these is different than the others. Can you pick which one is different than the others? If you have your journal and you want to write that number, the first one's one, the second one's two, and the last one's number three. Which one is different? Well, if you put in number three, congratulations, you got it right. And you also have your definition of holy from God. All other ground was the same, but God told Moses when he came near him with the burning bush, he says, get your sandals off because where you're standing is holy ground. Where you're standing is different than all other ground. Where you're standing is distinct from all other ground. Where you're standing is set apart from all other ground. And we ask, why was it different and distinct and set apart? And the answer is simple. God was there. Let's pick up the pace. Next stop, God and, and his people. If you remember, God had called Moses to lead his people out of slavery in Egypt in 10 plagues. It took 10 plagues, but finally out they came and they got as far as the Red Sea and they had to stop. They were trapped. Pharaoh's army was coming in to kill them. They're panicking, crying out. But God split the sea and the people crossed over and God destroyed Pharaoh's army. So what did the people do? They burst out into song. 
Well, what are they going to sing? Well, Exodus 15, and let's take notes on what the people declared. In Exodus 15, verses 11 and through 13, they, they declare in song, they say to, to God, Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? The leaky part, I, I've got to wonder, why did God not strike them down on the spot? Would we say that today? Oh, Lord, you're so awesome. Who among the gods is, is like, what are you, you're comparing him to other gods? Well, let's, let's remember, let's keep the context, context, context. Where had these people been? They'd, they had been in slavery. They'd been in Egypt over 400 years, surrounded by thousands of different gods that were being worshipped every day, false gods. That's all they knew. And then they get out and this, this true God shows them who is really God, that there are no others. And so they're going to declare, who among the gods is like you? Majestic in holiness. I wonder how they understood that word. Well, they just declared it. Who among the gods is like you? Awesome in glory, working wonders in your unfailing love. You'll lead the people you've redeemed. And in your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Holy, yes, from these people who had come out of Egypt. Evidently, they understood the meaning of holiness. Who among the gods is like you? So if we would give a test, we would put a picture of some a thousand different gods. And you can find them in a lot of the history books of the gods of Egypt that were worshipped, the false gods. And then if you could somehow find a way to depict the true and living God and put that picture in, what they're looking at is saying one of these is not like the others. All these others are pretty much the same, but one is distinct, one is different, one is set apart from all the others, and they understood it, and they declared it to be holy, and they declared it in their praise to the only true God, who among the gods is like you? And the answer, nobody. You are set apart, you are different, you are distinct. And so it begins with our study of the definition of, of holiness. Next stop, Mount Sinai, Exodus 19. God proposes to his people, says, would you like to get married? And they give the answer back through Moses, we will. And he says, okay, but here's the problem. There's a sin problem. There's a separation problem. God, it ha it's no problem because he has a plan to fix all of it. And guess what it is? It's about holiness. That's the solution. Holiness, God sends the word through Moses to the Israelites. Exodus 19, verse 5, if you follow in your Bibles, God will say, Moses, I want you to get this message to him and say, now listen, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations, out of all the peoples on the earth, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests. You will be for me a holy nation. Wow, holy, as it describes a nation. What does that mean? Stay in the context of the definition we've established from the very start of God's story. It means they're going to be different. They're going to be distinct. They're going to be set apart from all the other nations in the world at that time. All the rest, there's nobody going to be like them. God chose Israel out of all the nations to be his chosen people, his holy people. But brace yourselves, because God's plan is this concerning holiness. He wants to teach all of creation what holiness is, and that without it, you can't be with God. How's he going to do that? He's going to pick Israel, a nation, not because it's so big and strong and powerful. No, no. He picks them out of his love and say, I'm going to work through you. You're going to be the illustration to the world. You're going to be the ones that is going to show the world by how you live what holiness is. He tells them, and don't forget the most important part of the message he had Moses give them. It's the if. He tells them, if you'll obey. Oh, well, if I'm listening, to, oh, here comes that holiness. Yep, obey, here it comes. It's what I got it. Stay with me, be patient. I'm not speaking, it's not my word. These are, these are God's words. He tells them, if you'll obey, if you'll keep my covenant, then you will be to me a holy nation. 
we understand and we know the struggle they had. Many times they, they didn't. They didn't obey. And all the punishment would be poured out on them. But God never gave up on them. But they would learn. And they would be the message to the world of darkness of what holiness is. Number one, we know from, from the laws that, that were given to them. Uh, uh, Leviticus 11, verse 44, God introduces them say, here's the dietary laws. He says, here's how you're going to be different. Here's how I'm going to work through you to show the world what being different, being distinct, being set apart, being holy is all about. And at the end of giving them those instructions about what they could eat or couldn't eat, he says in Leviticus 11, verse 44, I'm the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves about on the ground. I'm the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. Obey. Follow my commands. What's he saying? Some people say, well, it's the, you, he said, these animals I'm going to declare clean, you can eat. These animals I'm going to declare unclean, stay away from them. And many will take this and say, oh yeah, well, if you do dig, or, uh, dig deeper in that and scientifically and medically, there's these, these benefits of staying away from this because you don't eat this, it's bad for you. And I'm saying that, that's all wonderful. It's a wonderful study. But let's not forget the main point. God is working through them to show the world, to teach the world what being distinct, being set apart, being different is all about, which is holiness. They're not going to eat everything that comes their way like the world. They're going to be different for God. And notice the next set of laws, the, the holy, holy and purity laws. He's going to give them the instructions on, on how you're to live. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Don't do any of these things. And then he tells them in Leviticus 19 and verse 2, he says, Moses, I want you to speak this to the entire assembly of Israel and you tell them, be holy. Because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Be holy. How do they get to be holy? If you will obey. If you will follow my commands and keep my covenant. Third set of laws he gives them regards sexual morality and how to be pure and undefiled in, in things like marriage and, and other things. But he's going to end up the whole thing and, and tell them, pay very close attention. Leviticus 20 and verse 7, he says, consecrate yourselves and be holy. Keep my decrees and follow them. Obey. I am the Lord who makes you holy makes you holy. There's a highlight, underline, and circle till you run out of lead or ink. God says, I'm the Lord who makes you holy. He says this before there was a Bible, before there was a temple or an altar to make sacrifices, before Jesus and the cross, God makes them holy. And God's people understood the whole concept of holiness because it's not complicated. Doesn't mean that they obeyed. We know the story. But oh, they understood. That's why we find later on as the story continues concerning holiness, David himself, he's going to reveal he understood holiness. Psalm chapter 24, 1 through 5, he says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Then he has a very important question, kind of like how we started this series. Am I holy? He asked the question, Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? In another portion of Psalm, he says, who can live on God's holy hill? And then he gives the answer. He says, who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. He who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord. He will receive vindication from God, his Savior. Wow. David knew. He knew what it would take. Our so what, we better finish up our first session here just as an introduction. Let's fast forward to our so what, and that's the one that's on most of all of our minds, I believe, today. The part where Jesus comes and dies on the cross and, and sheds his blood, which we're told that through Hebrews, that it is through his blood that we're made holy. Yes, but what does that mean? 
And many will say, well, fast forward to that part, because that's where I want to get to where it says that we don't have to do anything. Nothing we can do can make us holy. There's nothing in us that's good. There's nothing. Okay. Uh, but listen, something to consider to close this first session. All the passages uh, regarding holiness in that new portion, that portion after Jesus died on the cross, all those passages in the new part of God's story. And don't even get me started. It's all one story, but they're all just repeating exactly what God said about holiness in the first part. In the first part. 1 Peter 1, verses 13 through 16. Prepare your minds. That sounds like i got to do something. Prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace. Oh, I love that word. Grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed as obedient children. Oh, I don't like that word. Obedient children. Obey. Don't conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Don't be like the, you were when you were in the world with all the other people who don't know God and don't want any part of God. Conform, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, we're told. And then he says, just as he who called you is holy, so you be holy. And all you do, ah, here's that leak part, and all I, I do, here it comes, there's the preacher going to say, well, you have to do this and do this and do, you don't have to do anything. If you want holiness, according to Scripture, you get to be holy, meaning obey, meaning do, mean meaning be different, meaning be distinct, meaning be set apart from everybody else in this world of darkness. In fact, that's kind of how I would define the whole word and the challenge for us today. What does it mean to live a holy life? Do this. Take one look into whatever area of your life you're thinking about or talking about. Look out into the world and see how people in the world who don't know God and don't care to know God See how they're living in that particular area. How are they loving? How are they forgiving? How, how are they serving? How are they, and whatever it is that you see the world doing, you're to be exact opposite. You're to be distinct. We're to be different. We're to be set apart from that. There's your definition. In all you do, be holy because our God is holy. I got a lot to think about with that. Evidently, I've got a lot to do with that because I confess I have a lot of leaks in certain areas of how I'm living. And maybe I'm not alone today. And so the journey begins that we will continue, Lord willing, each week, taking a look at different areas and determining, having those hard conversations and discussions on what holy looks like in each area that we're going to talk about from week to week. What makes us different? What makes us distinct? What makes us set apart from the world in these areas of how we live our lives? We'll dig deeper into areas concerning being holy. What does it look like to have holy thinking, holy love. What's the holy Bible? What's holy worship? What's holy language? What's a holy matrimony? What are holy friendships? What's holy grieving? What's holy history? What's holy discipline? What are holy wars? What's holy dating? All of these and more. We have a challenge ahead of us, but I pray God's blessing to see us through and that today, if we hear his voice, we won't harden our hearts. How important is holiness? Hebrews chapter 12. We're told that uh, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Pursue peace and, and holiness. Uh, do these things. Do, do, do. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Must be very important. Perhaps you're watching today, if you've not surrendered your life, obeyed the gospel, I would encourage you to make that decision, repenting of your sin, coming back to God, confessing you need a Savior who died on a cross, yes, to make you holy, yes, and we'll talk more about that in our series, but to be raised up after you're immersed in the waters of baptism and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which helps you every day to continue to be holy. 
If you have any questions about that, don't hesitate to contact us through the information on our website. And also, if you need prayers, if you want to pray to God, if you're struggling with certain areas about not holy, maybe you couldn't answer the question, am I holy, because of some things you know that God has been trying to tell you about and you've had your heart hardened. Let it be today that you hear his voice and you open your heart. Uh, pray to him and, and have those around you to pray for strength and for healing and by all things to be holy. Until next time, keep the faith.